fact of the matter is, not every fish is going to survive release, but that's not an excuse for letting them float off. It's our responsibility to give every fish their best chance of surviving to grow, spawn, and be caught again. So why should we care about just one fish floating off? Well, to us it seems like nothing. But now think about the hundreds of thousands of anglers thinking that same way every single day. It's a huge amount of waste and we're losing a lot towards the future of our fishery if we don't help return fish to the bottom. If you've ever caught and released reef fish, we're talking snapper, grouper, deep water fish, and you've released them and seen them float off, you know what barotrauma is. Barotrauma is a pressure-related injury that fish experience when being reeled to the surface. So what happens is they come from an area of high pressure at the sea floor to an area of low pressure at the surface. Their swim bladder expands, it displaces organs inside their body and leaves them bloated and unable to return down to depth on their own. There's some obvious external symptoms and some internal symptoms that aren't as obvious. So one that most people know is the stomach sticking out of the mouth of the fish. What happens is the swim bladder expands inside of the fish and actually pushes the stomach out of the mouth. Some other ones are intestines protruding from the anus of the fish. Bubbling scales is one that a lot of people don't know about. The air can actually expand so much that it forces its way out of the scales of the fish. And the last one is simply, uh, you don't see it as much, but if you you feel the fish or snapper or grouper and its stomach feels like it's bloated like a balloon or full of air, then it likely needs additional help getting back down to the bottom. So there's a couple different things you can do to alleviate that pressure or the excess gas inside the fish or recompress the fish. One thing you can do is vent the fish, which is using a sharp hollow object where you can pierce a couple inches behind the base of the pectoral fin, and that'll release the excess gas in the body cavity. Or you can descend fish, which is a much safer option for a lot of anglers out there. You don't have to use a sharp needle on a rocking boat, and you can simply use these weighted devices and bring them back down to where they were caught and they'll recompress as they're going down the water column, and then they'll release automatically. It's as easy as clipping the setting device on the lower jaw, sliding it on an inverted hook and dropping it down, or even putting them in a weighted basket or crate and lowering them down. There's really something for everyone out there, and you can even make them yourself at home. We were fishing in deeper depths, uh, north of 200, and every time we brought them up, we would put the fish forward, FWC officers would drop them down, and I noticed the descending device was on board. I was extremely curious how it worked. I noticed no fish were floating up during the day, and they pretty much, you know, explained how it would drop them at depth, it would release, and it would sink, like, they would, they would live. I was blown away by it. So I watched it, and the entire day, not a single fish died. A lot of people assume that a fish is just dead anyway when it's experiencing severe symptoms of barotrauma. It seems lifeless at the surface. It's amazing to watch underwater footage of a fish recompress. As they're descending down the water column, all of those symptoms of barotrauma just go back to normal and the fish regains life and starts swimming again. It's so important to make sure we're doing our best to mitigate barotrauma and make sure that these fish that are caught offshore are returned properly so we can go back out there when the season's open or when they're big enough to keep and take them home. I fell in love with fishing at a young age and I turned my passion for fishing into a career. So I want to make sure that there's at least the same amount of fish, if not more fish around uh, for my kids in the future. If you're passionate about fishing, let's work together to protect the future of the sport so it's around for generations to come.